Okay, welcome back everyone. Now that you've calculated your UC Cal State GPA, now it's time to see uh, if you're eligible to apply to Cal State and the UC system or just the Cal State system. So let's get to it. All right, so for the University of California, you're going to calculate your GPA, which yay, you did this already. Um, you're going to Google UC admission requirements and you're going to find the admission index. I'm going to show you how to do it, so don't, don't worry. You're going to slide the bars. So this uh, slide is for your records, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So here we go. So I literally Googled UC admission requirements and I'm going to click here, admission requirements. And over here, you see where it says admission index. You're going to click on more. Okay, my internet is a little bit slow, but it gets there. All right, so then here, you've got to enter your GPA. So let's say that you have a 3.3 GPA. You're gonna slide that over. Uh -oh, it's precarious. And then you've gotta pop in your test scores. Let's say you, you take the ACT, right? And you pop it over until you hit green. So that's what, so see right now, you've got a 3.3 GPA, but with these test scores, you're not yet hitting the green. You're not in the top 9% yet. So let's see what it takes to pop it into green. Ah, there we go. So I popped it by getting a 30 and a 31 with uh, the ACT, a composite of 30 on the ACT and with the writing a 31. Okay. So that's how that works. So I'm going to give you some examples. All right, so let's go back to this. What I did was I wanted to show you that the higher your GPA, the lower your test scores need to be. So with a 4.1, I needed to hit um, these numbers with the SAT. Okay, so you can see there. And with the 4.1 with the ACT, I needed to hit these numbers, okay? So they're much lower than the ones that I just showed you. Okay, so the lower your GPA, the higher your test scores need to be, again, in order to hit that top 9%. So when I did this for 3.3, I had to get these numbers for SAT, and I had to get these numbers for the ACT, all right? so. I wanted to just point that out and give you some examples so that you um, can kind of get, a, get a, a sense of what that means. All right, oh, before we go on, I wanna just say, and I can't emphasize enough, being minimally eligible does not equal highly competitive. So you wanna just keep that in mind. The more, the higher level of schools you're going to apply to, the higher your test scores and GPA need to be. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to Cal State's. The Cal State GPA, again, you've already calculated this because you watched my first video. If you have a 3.0 GPA or above, you are automatically eligible. So there's nothing more that you need to do other than to take the test, but you don't need a, a minimum test number. All right, so you should also know that the, there is no need uh, to take the writing component for ACT or SAT. So there you go. So what you need to know, you know your GPA, you know your ACT or SAT score. Um, so if your GPA is lower than 3.0, we need to do this exercise. So here we go. We're going to Google CSU eligibility index. So if we go over here, I already did that. I Googled that and I click here on eligibility index. And I say, yes, I'm a California resident. Uh, I say no here and then I enter 2.8. All right, so with the 2.8, it tells me that I need a minimum of an ACT score of 14 or an SAT score of 710, okay? And that's it. That's all you need to know. All right, so now what? Now, next is to access a list of colleges that's appropriate for you. Um, minimally eligible does not equal highly competitive, so you want to keep that in mind. And you're going to learn how to research colleges and find the ones you love. You can reach for the stars. You can um, get there, but you're going to need a plan. So my next videos and the videos before will help you achieve your goals. Okay, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye-bye.